several wars. I wanted to start by saying something that celebrates women. All too often, it's a kind of bad news to be one, the lie that we live in, that we all have the same freedoms. It's enough just to look at the worldview to know that however far we have come on this issue, there's still a long way to go. So, to celebrate women, first, you gotta find them. They're usually behind the scenes. The marginalized, often despised, strong women of the world making history and babies and poetry happen since time began. You know that expression, he's a self-made man? There is no corresponding phrase for women because all women are self-made women. Any woman who survived her childhood and managed to escape the kitchen is a self-made woman. There is no need to make the distinction. In fact, if a woman isn't making it on her own, she's considered taken care of. It's a strange thing to love being female in the face of such blatant hatred towards us. Now, I say hatred so as not to be confused. I'm not just a little bit upset about a few slanderous remarks from some fat talking heads or the comments from Republican representatives that'll make your stomach clench up and your hands coil into fists. I am talking about the sheer amount of rapists and murderers and predators that exist in this sick society that we live in. Because patriarchy is a vicious system full of wage gaps and rape victims, and I'm watching as they attack the harder rights of women in this country, and those gains, my friends, are not to be let go of quietly. I, for one, think they should be fought for and protected, but then I guess that makes me the militant feminist, so go ahead, call me all your names. You don't even flinch at name calling anymore? I mean, it doesn't mean you don't want to debate this shit with every meathead on me either. Can you believe that some days I just get sick of hearing it all together? You know what else I'm sick of hearing? You throw like a girl. Oh, you throw like a girl. You throw like a girl. Damn it, I am a girl. So why should I aspire to throw any other way? Like, you think it's so great that you got all the upper body strength, man. I have the strength of connectedness. I'm the earth and its consciousness. And yes, I throw like a girl. I'm better at a lot of things. And I think that the point is that equality isn't about treating everyone the same because we're all the same, okay? It's about treating everyone with respect because we're all different. That there are strengths and weaknesses in each of us and that we may learn from each other's experiences. Because me, man, I'm all about the win-win, okay? I'm all about the putting time into the collective because together we are greater than it. Men, if you can't see that women's issues are your concern too, then I'm afraid we're all screwed. It should bother you when Republicans try to throw us under the bus. It should bother you that they want us all barefoot and pregnant. And ladies and gentlemen, if you think you've had enough yet, it's time to tell them. This isn't about contraception. This is about adequate health care and education in the first place. This is about getting paid 80 cents on the dollar still and then being told to cough it up for daycare. I mean, they got us coming and going, don't they? they got us squabbling about it on election day, and I'm telling you, don't be fooled. They will divide us in any way that they can because when we come together, we are greater than. And women. The calamities of the world are women's issues. This 10-year war on terror is affecting women too. The holes in the ozone layer and the prison systems and the lunches that they're feeding to the kids in the schools is our issue. And frankly, we've got a lot of work to do. To find peace and onion for everyone, to protect and replace the social safety net that we put there, and for a good reason, to stamp out greed and hatred and corruption and learn to see every injustice as the problem, and learn how to put our two cents in to help solve them, because the future is brand new. So what are the women and men of conscience going to do? Because when it comes down to it, it's going to be up to me and you. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> called the huff and puff of my frustration. <laughs> it's not fair. If I were to punch you as hard as I could, I would sprain my own wrist. You would maybe notice as I reduced myself to tears, so instead I used my words, and I'll tell you one thing, this mouth never got me in if I didn't write the fuck get me back out of. He said I use my words instead, and it's been working so far. But they're bailing out the banks again, those leeches with their fees, so the question then becomes, how much is your money worth? Depends. How much have you got? Not a lot? Well, that's okay, baby girl. You two could still be president. Just get in line, and we'll call you. And in the meantime, try and find a job worth a damn to do, because the rent is due. And you're not getting any younger, and these cards aren't exactly stacked in your favor. I say get a clue. And pay attention, because the undercurrent is ever changing in its direction, and you want to stay ahead of that game. You want that spot on top of the food chain, don't you? Everybody's so busy looking out for number one, and then they wonder why they feel so all alone. So many skin and bones while the top 1% clench their law enforcement fists so tight that you have the right to work until you die in this country and it's about it. Now pay your bills and buy some shit and don't forget to check your credit score. 
And it gets harder to ignore when they're coming right for you, but these folks, they just don't care anymore. You can change a channel if it bores you. So me, I threw out my TV. People gotta tell me when I'm on it. People gotta explain the whole commercial, because I never catch the reference. Man, I got better things to see. And I understand that time is precious. Mine is spent in reverence of this life, because I'm in love with it, I'm in love with it. I just, I need to learn how to slow down <laughs> and just appreciate this moment. This one, because it's all there is, and then I'm off again, forgetting, and I'm looking up again, and I'm searching for the lines that I had memorized, so that I, so that, well, so that I can think about something else. Sometimes I feel helpless, like I have a needle but no thread, so it's no good, I can only manage the damage. Sometimes I'm the subject of the charade, and some days I'm just its contents that is displayed as a series of statistics, and yes, I am sometimes why. So what of it, and what difference does it make when you die? Well, I want a government that practices something like the take a penny, leave a penny system. And there will come a day, but either way, I'm for that rain or shine type of activism. The committed who don't shed their tears but collect them. Weaving them into meaningful tales, we tell each other stories of bravery and compassion to keep ourselves warm, to keep our hearts burning. And I'll tell you another thing, it's you, me, and everybody, so don't go making enemies because you can't win. Instead, it's time to start talking to these strangers, our neighbors. It's time to start caring for each other again. Call it a community, call it an occupation, call it the revolution if you want it. Just get on it. Ten years ago would have been a good place to start, now we'll do. Or at least I think we can all agree that now is the very best we can do. So come with me and take heart. I got some New Year's resolutions and a good idea where to start. I got some friends on the inside, the outside, the flip side, and the best part is that you decide your place in this world, okay? You decide. So let's start, because to build a better world, all you really got to do is your part. Thank you. This one is called on military drones and tearing them to pieces. It's the arms race of the future, really, except this time Sputnik's gonna be an unmanned plane. And if the vessel is unmanned, doesn't that make the killing automatically inhumane? It's odd to me to think that when I'm voting with my dollar, I demand a better treatment of the chicken for my dinner than our military seems to see fit for the people on the ground in places like Iraq and Yemen, Afghanistan, or Pakistan. You know, those unreliable statistics, because really, who sees? The trouble with machines is that there's a lack of accountability. I want our government to have to make little stickers for all their little planes that say no dolphins or civilians were harmed in the making of this democracy. How about that? How about a harm-free approach to foreign policy? Can you install that, Uncle Sam, at the point of your gun? Of course not. It's an oxymoron. American humanitarian on a mission, and it's called an invasion. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. Because this sharing Superman, it's a U.S. military drone and it's loaded, so go ahead and run. Because it sees you too, but not with eyes, with orders. I mean, because anyway, that's what collateral damage is code for. Dead people. Lots of them children. Unarmed civilians is a way of saying that they had nothing to do with this conflict, but then neither do we on this end. The taxed yet unrepresented majority of people in this country who do not like the war and do not support another one, but what can we do? We don't feel the trigger under our finger because we're fed a constant stream of lies, and all our lives we're told that it's do unto others as you would have done unto yourself, and yet every time the news breaks that a woman is raped, that a village was slaughtered, we are ready to make those sacrifices for what we call the safety of our country, and it is utter nonsense, okay? Violence begets violence. This is a fundamental truth. We are the purveyors of death and atrocity in these parts of the world, and then you wonder why they hate us? So you tell me, who is the real terrorist? The rebel with the gun or the smiling politician? Whatever gets the job done. And these days, the job is as easily done as the push of a button by some pimple-faced kid in a bunker in Nevada somewhere. Did you know that the controls for these drones are compatible with the PlayStation? This is not a coincidence. They are spoon-feeding this to your kids, so I suggest you get acquainted, because drones are the future of warfare that already is. And I heard that Obama just okayed the use of drones over all U.S. airspace within the next year. So be prepared to see them around, equipped with cameras instead of bombs, so that should make us all feel safer. You know, they say they are looking at the ter they're, they're looking at the terrorists among us, but they're looking at everyone, you know, just in case. Even though the only cases, it seems, that our government team can solve these days are the ones that they cooked up in the first place. But hey, they gotta spend that budget some way, don't they? And did you know that it takes a whopping, jaw-dropping 300 people to fully operate one of these planes for just one day? One of these $28 million pilotless planes? Oh yes, sorry, it's a booming industry. You remember that bumper sticker about how great it'd be if schools had all the funding that they needed and the army had to hold a bake sale? People, this is why your government is busy buying. This is where your tax dollars go. So when they tell you they've gotta cut some spending, you just tell them, land some drones, man, just land the drones. And call me a sentimental hippie like that, but I believe in the power of the people to fight back because we can't just let this technology run wild or go rogue or come crashing home on us. Men, we must realize and regulate. We gotta study up and educate people before this whole thing gets out of control with evidence to suggest that we are already at the threshold. So why don't you let your president and let your Congress members know what you think about these wars and what you think about these drones. Tell them, we don't need any more killing machines, all right? We got better ways to spend that money back home. Why don't you leave those kids in Pakistan alone? It's time to end the wars and land the drones. Yeah.
The Cable News Network as Equivalent to Attention Deficit Disorder, or CNN equals ADD. <laughs> Never lived in a one-horse town. But I figure we've got, a, we've got the suburbs now. It's all about how you get around. It's the poor out there in the middle of nowhere that get the real shit deal. They face prejudice every day with no resources, no choices, no chances to heal. So I finally made it to the city, and you can feel the grime on my face. People pack closer together, same shit, less space. I want to burn down every million dollar deal I see and break every television teaching that only want is free. But there are rules in place that keep us moving, single file. The education of our children not to touch that dial or whiten that smile. The happy meals brought to your door are worth killing for, it's worth drilling for. The daily grind or reminder that time is money spent and the debt of cavities, lazy worker bees, and rent are accepted conditions. Casual addictions not to be mentioned except in passing because someday we all are going to die. And you know it's not just time that's passing you by, right? So now the war to end them all has already begun. Design a new Nintendo version, teach them kill for fun. They're screaming censorship in Jesus' name as children that he loves, but we're going to pump them full of Ritalin for all this acting up. And I've had enough. Throw back the crutch and they fed you lies and pesticides and pretend to try to clean it up? I mean, come on, let's try to clean it up. Of injustice, imperialist, false security, how about just vulgarity? It offends me that you even think you understand, man. You've been at it for centuries like this was always the plan, and I too caught up in the mystery to lend a hand. New plan. Everybody use what you know. Do what you can. Everybody in it for all, because we're all in this together and the ship's not going down without a fight. That's right, I said, I'm here to get some work done. I'm in it for the education so that I can use these tools my two hands to change the world and then change the world again. I'm so sick of everyone acting like some coming revolution is the only time and place to take a stand, man. So if this is not right right now, you can, but then, never mind, I find I'm up against the American attention span. So what else is on? And what have you done? And what are we going to leave to the generations to come? Because all I came here today with was a question. Begging revolution. I like to end on an, on an up note, you know, and like just talk about like the good that's in this area right now. I'm not even in the room, but like the, the people here who, who do this work. And so this one's kind of dedicated to you guys. Um, and it's just, you know, it's just important that, you know, people do the work of getting out there and talking to people, but also that, you know, we, we build hope and that that's kind of, that's where I come in, I think. I like to try to think I inspire people, but I also just think that it's important that the, for the people who do the work that we build hope every day and that we continue this struggle. So um, the last poem that I'm going to do is called A Beautiful World. It's to that end. I have lived my life in fear and found no solace there. I learned that even with your head in the sand, your other end is left blowing defenselessly in the wind. I have also learned since that I have to... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I've also learned since that you can't just go marching into darkness just to prove you're not afraid of things that you should be. I'm on guard with good reason these days, knowing the worth of my own dead weight, and I must balance my values of freedom and dignity on a regular basis. Minneapolis, war front that I love. I've learned the importance of community, having support systems in place to watch our own backs and back alleyways, and the first use for our society is survival. Skills shared openly and resources for everyone, not owned, sold, or traded. Or at least I imagine it could be like this. I've learned the power of our dreams and local politics, and I have learned to be patient and when not to wait around for permission to change because change is inevitable and the only question is direction. And yes, I am here today with an agenda. I want to set it right and see what happens. I want to get it right and give it some room, a little sunlight and attention to bask in, to bloom. See what becomes of creation when you give peace a chance. A plot of land and a shared space under my care can flourish. We are so rich when we work together, and for everyone, we are so rich when we work together. And for everyone that it bears repeating. I go on believing this and then making it come true and I've seen it work and so have you. And isn't it a more beautiful world when we do? Thank you.